I am now requesting Anji uh, Mahabur Rahman to conduct this today's session. Thanks to Professor Dr. Muhammad Shamsud Jamal from the Department of Computer Science and Communication Engineering, Kodakali Science and Technology University. I am Muhammad Mahabur Rahman from the Department of Computer Science and Information Technology, Kodakali Science and Technology University. Conducting the lecture on networking devices and tools. Uh, the previous lecture was with the uh, same courses, but today we have different topics. It's the project of Strengthening Asia Connect Female Network Engineer, funded by European Union, TNCC, and Asia Connect to capacity building of female network engineers and IT girl and future tech girl. In our previous lecture, we have <coughs> completed uh, some part of uh, topics like uh, uh, the introductory talks about the computer networks and data communications, how the telecommunications works, how data communications from uh, we learn about the net basic of network architecture so how network are from like it's client server peer to peer computer network after that in our previous lecture uh, we see saw the enterprise private network or enterprise network architecture by which uh, the subscriber or user can get internet from uh, get network connection or for to access the internet like a local area network uh, metropolitan area network wide area network and personal area network after that we have already know about network topologies topologies was the how the network devices are arranged like as bus bring extra mesh and hybrid topologies. After that, we have learned about uh, network transmissions, how the network devices transmit data in different modes, like a simplex, up duplex and duplex mode. And then today we will learn about uh, network, com uh, network components, like as uh, transmission devices and tools, switching devices and tools, routing devices and tools, security devices and tools, network operating systems, server components, medium access control addresses, and network layer task, uh, transmission control protocol, internet protocol stacks, and OSI models. So this is the second part of this course, uh, to learn about different network components. It was the review on previous lecture that I have already told you. But in our previous lecture, uh, there was one of the questions are how to install optical fiber splices on connectivity uh, that was not shown in our previous lecture. So now I'm playing a video uh, to show the fiber optic media converter and design for dynamic networks or optical network unit when you provide the gigabyte ethernet service as a advanced feature of media converter. So how to install optical fiber spices on connector with any fusion spice. So I'm playing this video. Hey guys, all right, today we're going to crimp an Ethernet cable. So first what you want to do is you want to remove the sheathing on the wire using the little handy dandy wire stripper. Pull that sheathing off, it's going to expose the twisted pairs. It's going to take a few minutes to separate each pair and then go ahead and 
untwist them and get all the wires nice and organized. All right. Hi, I'm Mike with Trango Systems. Today we're going to show you how easy it is to terminate fiber in the field for use with your Apex Plus system. The Trango licensed microwave products are compatible with any type of fiber optic cable from single mode to the two types of multi-mode. In this case, we're using a 50 micron OM2 type indoor-outdoor fiber optic cable. Okay, let's go over the items we'll need to terminate the fiber. Of course, fiber. We need a fiber cleaver, wire strippers, some alcohol wipes, scissors, a marker, a ruler, some clear tape, a knife, and the fiber connector. So now it's time to strip the fiber. First step, put on the little fiber boot, connector boot, get that out of your way. Next is to strip back uh, a portion of the buffer and according to the manufacturer of this connector that needs to be 40 millimeters, which is there. So I'm going to strip this off a little bit at a time. You want to be very careful not to cut the fiber itself. Okay, I've stripped back the buffer and now you can see just little pieces of the cladding which also must come off the fiber. The cladding is clear uh, and you'll see it come off as you strip the fiber. We'll use our alcohol wipes to clean any additional residue that's been left on. You want to make sure after you've stripped the fiber that you haven't uh, accidentally scored it. Just give it a little bend like that. If you have scored it, it will break. So we're good. That's basically what the cleaver is going to do. I'll put this into the holder and uh, the manufacturer says that the buffer should be at the 10 and a half millimeter mark, like so. We're good. Just make sure everything's in there. Hold it like this. Lift up on the holder and press down again. That will take any tension off the fiber. It's a very simple act of um, scoring the fiber. Just press down on the blade, just like that. That doesn't actually cut the fiber. Here's the cool part. You just bend this until that score you've made has propagated through the fiber and it breaks right off. Now that we've cleaved the fiber, we can put the connector on the end. Super simple step. The advent of these filled installable connectors, this step is easier than ever. Make sure it's in there. Uh, bend the cable or bend the fiber a little bit just to make sure there's enough tension to hold it in place and then squeeze the holder and you now have an LC type connector. We're going to slide the boot up. That's now a complete LC type connector. Remember, you'll need two of these to interface with your Apex Plus. Okay, second cable. Yep. And again, strip off a little bit at a time. Being careful not to cut the cable. The fiber optic. And into the cleaver, just like that. Into the connector. And now we have our second LC type connector. Along with the first, this will create a complete physical link into the fiber interface of the radio. After you've stripped the fiber or if you've accidentally 
cut a piece of fiber, you want to dispose of that properly. One way to do that, just take the clear piece of tape that we had before and collect that piece of fiber along with any pieces that uh, are still within the cleaver. You can wrap this up and then throw it away. Okay, this is the video for how to install spicing of optical fiber cables. Splice on connector and installation process.
Okay, thanks for watching. Now we'll continue <coughs> the next part of this course from network device. Network device is an individual components of the network that participate one or more of the protocol layer. Actually, <coughs> computer networks are uh, is a complex system that have divided into different layers uh, in different models like as TCP IP and open system interconnection OSI models. So in each of this layer, I have different functions. So different network devices are work in different layers and we'll learn about these devices and which, is, which device uh, uh we'll work on this layer and the functionalities and operational mechanism of those devices network devices are necessary to build up networks to keep the communication flowing as our previous lecture we we'll learn about nodes and links nodes are the devices like us from uh, competing devices and other uh, network equipments uh, which will make the transmission lines includes the hubs, routers, gateways, switches, repeaters, wireless access points, bridges, etc. At first, we'll learn about modem. Modem is came from the name modulator and demodulator are combined combination of two things. That means when we are to uh, a device that enables, enables a computer to send or receive data over telephone or cable lines, the data stored in the computer is digital, whereas the telephone line or cable wire can transmit in analog data. So when uh, we want to send data to the receiver, the sender computer connected with a modem or network modems, the modem will modulate the data into the signals. So this is the modulations, different modulation techniques are available, pulse code modulations, delta modulations, and other types of modulations. Signal modulation techniques are used in build of this network modems. And when, the, when a computer receives data from a transmission lines, it's nothing but a signal. That signal is converted into digital data or analog data according to the pattern of this data or type of this data. So modem performs to encode and decode signals, data to signal and signals to data. The example is about a Netgear modems. Yeah. That I have already talked to. Switches. Dedicated circuits that is placed into a node of this network. There are two types of switches. One is circuit switching like as telephone switches, establishes a circuit for communications, and another is packet switch. So in circuit switching networks, there is a dedicated path between the sender and receiver. Sender will use or utilize the full bandwidth of that line uh, to send the data to the receiver. And within the communications time, full bandwidth are utilized for communication and it's a dedicated line and reliable line for communications and in packet switching data are put into packets packets that means uh, it should be a protocol data unit ptu data are packed into small pieces of uh, parts are wrapped with different network protocols so that that's data is called protocol data unit 
and this packet are sent from the source to destinations without any dedicated client. It will follow over the uh, public networks and can the sender, uh, the receiver can receive the data from different lines and receiver will accumulate this data. So router knows where is the forward, the packet, the packet have the sender information and the receiver information so that the router will decide how to forward this data to the destinations. Here is a telephone switch network. From this point to this point, there is a dedicated line for communications. But in packet switch network, if this computer want to send the data to this computer, there have some alternate paths available here. So in packet switch network, packet may travel from any available paths. Whereas the congestion going on, the packet will avoid that path and raise the destination from the alternate path. Network switches, a networking hardware that connects devices on a computer network, use packet switching to receive and forward data to the destinations, can connect multiple device and network to expand the LAN. Here is a network switch that we have used in our local area networks or public networks. So it's have the incoming connection and it can be expanded to uh, different outgoing connections. Uh, we can make a simple LAN by using this type of switch. Network hub or an ethernet hub, active hub, network hub, repeater hub, multiport repeater, or simply hub is a network hardware that are called in different names, but all of them are same, is a network hardware devices for connecting multiple ethernet devices together. You can making them act as a single network segments. Hub works at physical layer and transmits signal to the port. Swiss route the information and send it over the networks. Switching devices, type of switches, LAN switch connects the wire device such as computers, laptops, routers, servers, printers to a local area networks. That means if we want to make a local area networks, we have to use a LAN switch. LAN switch will receive an incoming con connection uh, from the uh, public networks uh, or, or the enterprise networks and it will uh, transmit our data uh, from the incoming signal to the outgoing, it's a designated number of ports here. Okay? Smart switches are attempts to give you best internet connectivity by automatically switching the multiple providers. If there are multiple network providers, the smart switch placed there, there may have multiple incoming connections and it will automatically switch as between them. To maintain a quality connections. PoE switch allows the compatible devices to work in place where the power outlets or network connection does not exist. Unmanaged switches and unmanaged switches allow to immediately plug and play devices into the networks. Managed switch allows for greater control over it. Managed switch support routing configuration and multiple VLAN interface. Here is a switch. Basically, uh, there have a system led RS232 console port, mini USB. 
Ethernet RJ45 connectors. RS232 console port with RJ45 connectors. USB ports. I have two SFP ports with 1 GB to 10 GB. And there have 12, 10, 100 or 1000 MB Ethernet ports with RJ45 connectors of outgoing connections and electrostatic discharge points are there. Managed switch allows for greater control over it. Multi-layer switch is another type. A multi-layer switch is a computer networking device that switches on OSI layer to like an ordinary network switches. and provides extra function on higher OSI layers. Perform the function of switches as well as that of a router at an incredibly faster speed, both its layer two and layer three capacities. Here is a multi-layer switches connected with internets and also connected with different stations. Typical management feature of switches Enable and disable ports. We can connect uh, switches and we can manage uh, switch, switches by enabling and disabling some of its ports. Link bandwidth and duplex settings. Quality of service configurations and monitoring. Medium access control filtering and other access control list feature so that we can configure it uh, as you want so, so that we can uh, give someone to access this for service or access this device or not configuration of a spanning tree protocol and shortest path base feature simple network management protocol monitoring of devices and link health port mirroring for monitoring traffic and troubleshooting, link aggressions, configuration to set up multiple ports for the same connection to achieve higher data transfer rate and reliability, VLAN configurations, and a port assignment, including IEEE 802.1Q tracking, network access control feature such as IEEE 802.1. X that means one 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 two one three like that and IZM is snooping for traffic and multicasting traffic. So that this is the typical management feature of switches. So how we can access the access the control panel of switches and we can uh, manage that type of functions to provide better network services. Routing device, router, a switching device for networks, is actually an intelligent device. As we previously know that in packet switch network, like as datagram and other protocols that uses packet switch network, uh, packet switching techniques, router is the four things there. It's an intelligent device that will forward a packet to its destination uh, by executing its uh, specialized algorithms and able to route the network packets based on their addresses and to the networks for the devices. Use a specialized algorithm, make decision to transmit data packets. Uh, there are different types of routers are there, wired routers, wireless routers. Wired routers are connected with uh, normal wireless signal are coming from or uh, uh, incoming and outgoing signal are transmitted uh, from wired medium. There are some wireless routers. The function is to 
receive and send signal uh, via wireless mediums. Four routers that is set on the backbone of a network. These routers are set to the end point of the networks and there are some VPN routers uh, for maintaining the virtual private networks. So here is some typical figure of a router. Routing devices are available videos. We'll play some videos here. The what does a router do in brief? Let us enjoy this video. Welcome to Train Signal. I'm Ross Bagertis. And in this video, I want to give you a really solid introduction to router basics. All right, so let's take a look at what a router does. So when we have two PCs that want to talk to one another and send messages between each other, we can do this by just connecting the two PCs together with a crossover cable. Crossover cable is an Ethernet cable that allows you to connect two like devices together and we'll learn about that more in the video of ethernet and switching for the time being know that these two devices are connected together and they have proper setup at the physical layer with the wire and proper setup at the data link layer with ethernet at the network layer now we've assigned ip addresses to each of the devices so the device on the left has the IP address 192.168.10.10. The one on the right is 192.168.10.20. Now because the IP addresses are both on the same network, and we know they're on the same network because the network portion of the address is the first three octets. Right? The first three numbers in the address is the network portion. How do I know this? Because the subnet mask, which is written right below it, shows that the first three numbers here, 255, 255, 255, represent the network portion of the address. Remember, if we convert 255 to binary, it's going to result in eight ones. So we have 24 sequential ones here that represent the network portion of our address. So because the network portion of the address on the device on the left has the same network portion as the device on the right, 192.168.10, we can pass messages back and forth between these two devices without any other equipment required. In the second example, if I change the address of the workstation on the right to 172.16.10.20, now I am unable to send messages between these two devices because the network portions of the address are different. This is one of the most fundamental basic rules about how traffic can be passed between devices at the network layer. Remember, network layer of the OSI model is the portion of the OSI model that deals with IP addressing and routing. So we're working with internet protocol here to move messages back and forth. So what we've done is in order to fix this problem of being able to have devices with different network portions talk to each other is we introduce this router. And a router, what it is, is a router is nothing more than a fancy PC. And I say fancy PC because this router has all the general components of a PC. It has a processor, it has memory, it has storage space like a hard drive or a flash drive. It has network interface cards on them. As a matter of fact, a router has more than one network interface card on it. Almost all routers will have at least two network interface cards, if not more. The equipment that I got to work with when I was at the hospital as a network engineer, some of our routers there had hundreds of interfaces, and we had hundreds of those devices. So in data networking, 
the router can have lots and lots and lots of network interface cards. Either way, it's still behaving very similar to a PC. So what we do then with the router is we assign one of the network interface cards on the router to the network on the left side, and we assign the other interface an IP address that is on the same network as the device on the right side. So our network interface card on our router then is 172.16.10.1 and the IP address on our workstation is 172.16.10.20. This is perfect because the network portions match and the host portion does not match. Every single IP address in an IP network must be unique. So when I have this set up on my right, I have two IP addresses on the same network, same thing on the left. My router is assigned here, 192.168.10.1, which has the same network portion as my PC on that side of the network. So now what I've done is I have a device on both sides of the network where both PCs can talk to the router. So both PCs have an IP address on the router they can communicate with. Well, we're going to take a deep dive and take a look at exactly how frames and packets are built in order to move across this network. But for the simplicity part of it, once I put this device in and give it IP addresses on each interface, the router now can actually move the packet from the device on the left to the device on the right without causing any problems. So we need this router in order to get traffic from one IP network to a different IP network. And that's pretty much its sole job. If we take a look at our home network, our home network, and this is a drawing that, we've, that I've shown you before in Introduction to Networking, and this is a pretty simplistic drawing of your home network. I have a wireless computer here, a wired computer here, and then the wireless router, which connects to your cable modem or DSL modem. And if we look at the networking here, we'll find out that unless you have some unusual or obscure setup in your home network, what we're going to find out here is that the network portions of all three of these devices, the laptop, the wired PC, and the inside interface of our wireless router, the network portions on those addresses are all going to be identical. And I actually encourage you to go and log on to your wireless router, if you're authorized to do such a thing, and take a look at how your home router is set up. Look at the internal network and see what IP address is assigned to it. Look at the internet side of it, see what IP address is assigned to that. And you'll notice that the network portion on the inside of your network is going to be different than the network portion on the outside of your network here. So in my drawing here, 192.168.10 is the network portion of my address on the inside of my network. 203.0.113 is the network portion on the outside of my network. So what the router is doing here is the router is allowing my traffic on the inside to get routed out to the public internet so we can pass traffic across it. So thanks for watching that video that we have <coughs> tried to clearly show up how router is necessary and how router works actually. Router serves two primary functions managing traffic between this network by forwarding data packets to the internet IP addresses and allowing multiple devices to use the same internet connections. Okay. It's like as a typical example here that we have already shown it into our videos. They have different type of routers. The first type is core routers operates on the same network, transfer large amount of data at top speed. It runs on, a, on the backbone of the internet, supports the routing protocols used in the kernel. It can also connect distributed routers from multiple large enterprise or community locations.
the edge router at the are placed into the boundaries of the network from the edge router the terminal devices are connected and distributed packages across multiple networks keeping communications flowing between several networks usually connected to the network for an internet service providers or an organizations so that they can distribute their connections or bandwidth to the users. As router are places at the boundaries of the networks. Network router can serve either wired or wireless connectivity for several end user devices applicable for network interconnections use routing algorithms and protocols that have different uh, routing algorithms like as single source short spark extra and other types of intelligent network routing algorithm that algorithms are used to find the shortest path from source to destinations and have different protocol according to service and have managed interface so that the network engineers can access the interface and can configure the routers and able to connect LAN to the internet. There have available video how to set up a routers. Mr. Noodles and Korean Super Spicy Noodles Super Red Hot Chili Our awesome Korean recipe te toi Mr. Noodles and Korean Super Spicy Noodles se ache Darun shaad ar charun jhal Mr. Noodles Hi everyone I'm Andrea Eldridge from Nerds on Call and callnerds.com for ehow.com here today to talk about how to install a wireless router these days, it seems like everything's designed to get on the internet. From handheld electronics to video games, if you have a high-speed internet connection, a wireless network will let all of your gadgets share the internet. While your equipment will probably look a little different from mine, the basic structure is going to be the same. Your internet service provider should have left you with a modem connected to a jack in the wall. This acts as the receiver for your internet signal. First, unplug your modem. Plug in your wireless router. There are two ports on your modem. One connects the modem to the jack in the wall. The other will fit a network cable. Plug one side of a network cable into the port on your modem. Your router will have several ports. Plug the other side of the network cable into the port on your router marked either internet or WAN. Power your modem back on. Wait for the lights on the front of your router to indicate that it's established a WAN connection with your modem. Plug another network cable into one of the LAN ports on your router and connect the other end to the ethernet port on your computer or laptop. Try using the installation disk that came with your router to run your system through the basic setup steps and walk you through configuring your router. An unsecured wireless network will allow anyone within range to access unprotected data on your network or even use your internet connection to do potentially illegal things like transmit viruses or download pirated content. Not all wireless devices support all encryption types. If it's available, select WPA. It's the most universal. Any wireless capable device in the vicinity of your router should now see your network. Prompt the device to search for available networks. Select your network from the list of available connections, enter your password, and connect. For more information on fine tuning your wireless network, check the links on this page. I'm Andrea Eldridge from Nerds on Call and callnerds.com. For ehow.com, thanks for watching. Thanks for asking. Uh, we have. Mahbub, sorry. Mahbub, just one minute. Uh, dear participants, if you have any question, you can write a question answer box. No need to raise your hand. Just write question answer box. We will collect uh, the all questions and finally we will answer our uh, instructor. Okay, continue. Okay, thanks, sir. 
uh, in our videos, we have shown that how wireless router can connect uh, with your computer, uh, so our other mobile phone from incoming connections. Now, access point. Access point serves wireless devices such as phones, laptops, tablets, bring wireless capability to a wired networks, operate on existing networks. Access point controller, a software based on access point management tool, built to build into a balanced and selected Max routers and allow the user to manage the entire wireless network from a router. So from our access point, uh, we can access the internet uh, to our wireless devices like as mobile phone, laptops, tablet PC, and other devices that support wireless connectivity. There are some other types of devices. One is wireless route repeaters. When signal travels a long distance from wired where wireless connectivity, signal may be weak for attenuation due to the wired connections. Then we can use this repeater. Like as for wireless repeaters. The, when the wireless signal uh, become weaker when we want to transmit it over the long distance, there may have some loss due to the foliage loss and other environmental effects. Uh, then we can use this wireless repeater to repeat the signal. So the wireless repeater connects a wireless network wirelessly and rebroadcast the signal. It will cast the weaker signal and rebuild the signals into the stronger one and helps to boost the wireless signal strength. So the strength signal will become the greater uh, connectivities or better connectivities. So this is the wireless repeaters that you can use to enhance our wireless connectivity. The range extender are a little bit different from wireless repeater. Range extender is also a repeater, but it will enhance the coverage area. Connects to wired network through the wired connections, helps to extending the home or office network or cover more area, boost the range of existing network wirelessly, and to create a stronger signal in poor coverage area. It will extend the coverage area of a access point and give the better connections as to the connecting devices of that network. There are some security devices. There have some security devices like as firewall a network security devices that monitor filter the incoming and outgoing network traffic based on security policies essentially the barrier that sits between the private internal networks to the public networks actually firewall is firewall can be a software or hardware devices that is placed between the uh, entry point of the network uh, uh, to maintain the security of an organization or it will maintain the security policy of an organization. Some when some ex external attackers want to intrude or want to uh, enter into the or some unlegitimate signals uh, or some hackers want to uh, enter into the networks, then the unlegitimate signal can be filtered by firewall and it will uh, use to protect the networks from external threats. There have different types of firewalls, packet filtering firewalls, 
that will automatically filter the packets uh, which are from unlegitimate sources or the packets uh, whose jitters are not matched circuit levels gateway application level gateways proxy firewall like that strict full inspections on firewall and next generation firewalls are like that network operating systems operating systems of routers as you know about from uh, our video uh, documents you know that the uh, router devices are works like as a uh, computer simple computer so uh, it have a, its own operating system uh, router board can also be installed on pc and we we'll turn it into a router with all the necessary features just like that uh, it will be able to uh, routing the incoming and outgoing packets have building firewalls have also have ability to manage the bandwidth the network when there have some quality of service and i have to use the protocols like as resource reservation protocols for some special service like as video conferencing and other types of real-time services uh, then there have some priorities of that services so that bandwidth should be blocked or uh, should be reserved uh, for that services in dedicated way uh, so that type of bandwidth management are also performed by uh, this vision okay, have some wireless access points, backhaul links, or alternate links, hotspot gateway, and VPN server or modes. There have some other networking softwares like a Cisco IOS, NX OS. Application centric from Cisco, application centric infrastructures, SEI, Cisco DNS softwares, and graphical user interface for managed devices. Network server, a computer or devices that provides a service to and other computer programs and the users, also known as the clients. In a data center, the physical computer that have server programs run on it, also frequently referred as a server. Actually, it's a combination of both hardware and software, uh, which will manage a greater networks or manage a group of computers are also called servers. It has enormous amount of processing capacities and maintain uh, rate services to store data or have greater processing speeds than traditional computers. When we want to set a data center or a network server to manage a network within an organization, the server are placed into a rack, rack unit, or server rack cabinets, is a unit of measurement of applied to equipment racks and servers. Disk drives and other devices are the content. A standalone 19 inch server rack cabinet is typically 42 U in height, 600 millimeters, 20 inch in white, and 36 inch in 9 on 4.40 millimeter in deep. 
is the server rack surface. Media access control or MAC address. It's an unique identifier that assigned to a network interface controller. Use as network address in communication within the network segment. In particular, this computer's network interface card includes Bluetooth, Wi Fi card, Ethernet card, has an unsensed medium access control address inserted by the manufacturer at the time of production. It is unsingeable and can uniquely identify those devices. Here you can see that the portions. Forty-eight bits length are here. First, for organizational unique identifier, identifies the vendor NIC, and next twenty-four bits are used to uniquely assign by the vendor for device identifier. So, a medium access control address is a unique address that is uniquely identified a devices of the network, and it is hard coded to the network interface cards. Protocol and standards. Protocol is a set of rules to governing data communications when the devices are connected to the internet or network. This device sends the data to other devices. By some rules are that's called the protocols. Protocol have syntax, the format of data block, and the semantics, the meaning of its sections. And the timing is quick or sequencing. And the standards, the de facto in practice, not approved but widely adopted. De juris in laws standards approved by an organization like as osa computer network are complex system that i have already mentioned in my earlier slides task involved in variety of hardware and software components and protocols networking task is divided into several subtasks or layers True principle of protocol layering for establishing bidirectional communications have to make each layer able to perform two opposite tasks on in each directions. The two objects under each layer is both sides should be identical. So protocol is used to govern communications it will maintain the formalities of different devices and for successful delivery of information from center to receiver and receiver to center. First of all, we will see the internet protocol model TCP IP, transmission control protocol or internet protocol that have five layers. One is application layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer, physical layer. So when a user wants to send a data, the user data will move from application layer to transport layer to transmission medium. And most of the upper layer are softwares and the lower layer are the internet layer model TCP IP 
you can see an available TCP IP model in animations so that the things should be more clear to us by watching this type of videos. You can adjust your sound according to your hearing capacity. For the first time in history, people and machinery are working together, realizing a dream. A uniting force that knows no geographical boundaries without regard to race, creed, or color. A new era where communication truly brings people together. This is the dawn of the net. Want to know how it works? Click here to begin your journey into the net. Now exactly what happened when you clicked on that link? You started a flow of information. This information travels down into your own personal mailroom where Mr. IP packages it, labels it, and sends it on its way. Each packet is limited in its size. The mailroom must decide how to divide the information and how to package it. Now the package needs a label containing important information such as sender's address, receiver's address, and the type of packet it is. Because this particular packet is going out onto the internet, it also gets an address for the proxy server, which has a special function, as we'll see later. The packet is now launched onto your local area network, or LAN. This network is used to connect all the local computers, routers, printers, etc. for information exchange within the physical walls of the building. The LAN is a pretty uncontrolled place and, unfortunately, accidents can happen. The highway of the LAN is packed with all types of information. These are IP packets, Novell packets, Apple Talk packets. They're going against traffic, as usual. The local router reads the address and, if necessary, lifts the packet onto another network. Ah, the router. A symbol of control in a seemingly disorganized world. There he is, systematic, uncaring, methodical, conservative, and sometimes not quite up to speed. But at least he is exact, for the most part. As the packets leave the router, they make their way into the corporate intranet and head for the router switch. A bit more efficient than the router, the router switch plays fast and loose with IP packets, deftly routing them along their way. A digital pinball wizard, if you will. Oh, 
As packets arrive at their destination, they're picked up by the network interface, ready to be sent to the next level. In this case, the proxy. The proxy is used by many companies as sort of a middleman in order to lessen the load on their internet connection and for security reasons as well. As you can see, the packets are all of various sizes, depending upon their content. The proxy opens the packet and looks for the web address, or URL. Depending upon whether the address is acceptable, the packet is sent onto the internet. There are, however, some addresses which do not meet with the approval of the proxy, that is to say corporate or management guidelines. These are summarily dealt with. We'll have none of that. For those who make it, it's on the road again. Next up, the firewall. The corporate firewall serves two purposes. It prevents some rather nasty things from the internet from coming into the intranet. And it can also prevent sensitive corporate information from being sent out onto the internet. Once through the firewall, a router picks up the packet and places it onto a much narrower road, or bandwidth, as we say. Obviously, the road is not broad enough to take them all. Now you might wonder what happens to all those packets which don't make it along the way. Well, when Mr. IP doesn't receive an acknowledgement that a packet has been received in due time, he simply sends a replacement packet. We are now ready to enter the world of the internet. A spider web of interconnected networks which span our entire globe. Here, routers and switches establish links between networks. Now, the net is an entirely different environment than you'll find within the protected walls of your land. Out here, it's the Wild West. Plenty of space, plenty of opportunities, plenty of things to explore and places to go. Thanks to very little control and regulation, new ideas find fertile soil to push the envelope of their possibilities. But because of this freedom, certain dangers also lurk. You'll never know when you'll meet the dreaded ping of death. A special version of a normal request ping, which some idiot thought up to mess up unsuspecting hosts. The paths our packets take may be via satellite, telephone lines, wireless, or even transoceanic cable. They don't always take the fastest or shortest routes possible, but they will get there, eventually. Maybe that's why it's sometimes called the worldwide wait. But when everything is working smoothly, you can circumvent the globe five times over at the drop of a hat, literally, and all for the cost of a local call or less. Near the end of our destination, we'll find another firewall. Depending upon your perspective as a data packet, the firewall could be a bastion of security or a dreaded adversary. It all depends on which side you're on and what your intentions are. The firewall is designed to let in only those packets that meet its criteria. This firewall is operating on ports 80 and 25. All attempts to enter through other ports are closed for business. Port 25 is used for mail packets, while port 80 is the entrance for packets from the internet to the web server. 
Inside the firewall, packets are screened more thoroughly. Some packets make it easily through customs, while others look just a bit dubious. Now, the firewall officer is not easily fooled, such as when this ping of death packet tries to disguise itself as a normal ping packet. It's okay, go on, it's okay, no problem. Have a nice day, we out of here, bye. For those packets lucky enough to make it this far, the journey is almost over. It's just a line up on the interface to be taken up into the web server. Nowadays, a web server can run on many things, from a mainframe to a webcam to the computer on your desk. Or why not your refrigerator? With a proper setup, you can find out if you have the makings for chicken cacciatore or if you have to go shopping. Remember, this is the dawn of the net. Almost anything's possible. One by one, <laughs> the packets are received, opened, and unpacked. The information they contain, that is, your request for information, is sent on to the web server application. The packet itself is recycled. ready to be used again and filled with your requested information. Addressed and sent out on its way back to you. Back past the firewall, routers, and on through to the internet. Back through your corporate firewall, and onto your interface. Ready to supply your web browser with the information you requested. That is, this film. Thanks for watching this video about how data packets move from sender to receiver to from a communication, how it does it pass from routers or firewalls, and how does it sex. So into the layer of TCP IP, the first layer is the application layer, the only layer to interact with user and responsible for providing service to the user. Is the logical communication between the sender to receiver from application layer, like as different protocol, simple mail transfer protocol, hyper text text transport protocols, file transport protocols are there works with. Suppose someone want to send data by hyper text transport protocol, it will add at the HTTP header. Send it data over transport layer. And from transport layer, it will also remove the HTTP header from the receiving end and information supplied to the application layer. The next layer is transport layer, responsible for delivery of messages from one process to another. Duties or services of transport layers are port addressing, segmentation and reassembly, connection control, flow control, and error control. Mostly it will maintain or control the connections. It will maintain the flow of data by the available bandwidth and controlling the end-to-end -end error so that the errorless messages can be received by the ensures the error level message should be ensured by the receiver. There are some transport layer processes. Send the data. Data to transport layer packets. 
adding the headers, segments are sent to the network layer. This is the receiving end from the network layer. It will remove the header and accumulate the data and send it to the processes of transport layer of the receiving devices. The next layer is network layer. It's, it's responsible for delivery of packets from the original source to the destinations. Duties or services, uh, logical addressing and routing. The network layer routes the data from multiple paths and uh, it will avoid the network communications and select the be best paths to reach that data. Different network routing algorithms are worked here for a successful delivery of data from best path. It will receive the data from network transport layer and add it the header of network layer forming the packet and send it to the data link layer. And in the receiving end, the data link layer will send back the data to the network layer. Network layer will remove its header and send it to the transport layer. So this is the estimated diagram by which the logical addresses are here. From network one, this is the network one, network six, network five, this is network three. All this network are here. So if a data sent from here to here, finding this path to route the data. The next layer is data link layer responsible for transmitting frames from one node to another. Duties or services of data link layer is for framing, physical addressing, flow control, hope to hope, error control, hope to hope, and access control. Data link layer will receive data from network layer. It will add is network header and send it to the physical layer from the sender end. From the receiver end, the physical layer signals are transmitted and add, remove the headers and send back to the network layers and network layer will send it to the upper layers for further processing. the data link layer here have four devices with sub physical addresses a3 3b a2 and 9f data will move from 9f to a3 is the header physical layer for transmitting individual bits from one node to the next. Physical layer actually employs with signals, either it from the guided medium or unguided medium, it will generate digital signals so that uh, forming uh, uh, the hardware of physical layer will, not, will uh, converted the data into digital signals or analog signals so that data can be moved as a signals from the sender end and in the receiving end the signal is demodulated and converted into digital or analog data. So physical layer characteristics of interface and media like as guided and unguided media representation of bits data are converted into the bit stream by pressing different type of modulation and demodulation techniques. The fixed or variable data rates are there, which is called transmission rate, 
by which data transmitted from sender to receiver and the synchronizations of bits work there they are sent from sender to receiver in synchronizations so that the, the packets or the bit stream can maintain its jitters receive data from data link here convert it into digital bit stream then in plus from transmission medium convert it into digital signals or analog signals send back to the receiving and physical layer bit stream are converted into data this is the whole process there are five layers in the sender end and five layers in the receiving end from the application layer it will add the application header and like that in data link layer after that the physical link the physical layer will convert it the data into bit stream or signals signals will travel from one node to another node or one device to another device and signal is back converted into bit stream in physical layer and the bit stream then in reverse process it will the data will reach the application layer or to the user so from user to user they only send some information or data that are moved into different layers and this is the destination by the back process This internet model again not to not works in data link layer host to host is network layer and process to process is transfer layer this is the process to process in transport layer host to host implies in network layer routing information are here and not to not seen data link here this is another figure for you source a to source destination b this is the basic figure here a want to send data to b link one with the swiss link two with the swiss there is a router there is another link to see so a have all five this layer this swiss have data link and physical layers working routers working network data link and physical layers but it have different interface one is income outgoing interface are here or there have multiple interfaces there is another switch which work with data link and physical layers and another host or destination uses all the five layers so when a data move from a source to destination it will traverse from or it will process by all these layers according to the types of these devices a set of protocols must be protocol suites a set of protocols must be constructed to ensure that the resulting communication system is completed and efficient this protocol should be handled a part of communications not to handle by the other protocols how can we guarantee that the protocol works well together instead of creating this protocol in isolation protocols are designed to in complete and cooperative sets called suites or families so that they can work together to form a communication system internet layer tcp ip protocol stacks in application layer some protocols are like hypertext transport protocols which are used to make some hypertext file transport protocol ftp telnet for controlling devices from Longer distance and simple mail transport protocols provide application network interface. Transport layer have the protocols like as TCP, transmission control protocol, user datagram protocol, and SCTP. 
establish end to end connections. Network layer have the protocols like IP, internet protocol with IPv4, IPv6, maintaining the network addresses of devices, and ICMP, internet control messaging protocol, and IGMP, addressing and routing information are maintained by it. In data link, the Ethernet, Wi Fi, or PPP to access media. And in physical layer, RS232, digital subscriber line, 10 base T, that type of protocol converts the data into the signals by binary data streams. There are another layers which was introduced by international standard organizations is called open system interconnection models OSI, developed by iso two additional layers in tcp we have saw on that there are five layer but in OSI model there have two another layers on is sessions and another is presentations two layers are between application and transfers session layer to establish and managing terminating connection between the applications and presentation layer handling differences in data representation to different applications so according to different applications data may be represented in different application in different way uh, so uh, this presentation layer will divide the data according to the application style Now we can, uh, we are at the end of this lecture or this courses. Now we can see how OSI model works, animations. The digital revolution has changed the way we work and communicate almost beyond recognition. Yet the smart, interconnected world we live in is still neither as smart nor as connected as we would like it to be. Until in the mid-1980s, the ISO or International Standard Organization developed networking model to provide standards that will become the basis for network designs. This is the OSI model. Several layers build up the Open Systems Interconnection or OSI model. Let's take the flow of data and represent it with a train system. Sending a file or clicking a link in your computer ignites a flow of information. The first layer to receive the command is the application layer. The application layer serves as the window for the users and application processes to access the network services. This layer contains a variety of commonly needed functions like resource sharing and device redirection. Data are packed and ready to take on a long journey. After the data is read, the next layer or the presentation layer formats the data to be presented to the application layer. It can be viewed as the translator for the network. This layer may translate data from a format used by the application layer into a common format at the sending station. It then translates the common format to a format known to the application layer at the receiving station. The presentation layer also encrypts control information 
into the data, in this case, the train, to be read by the next layers. This layer allows session establishment, maintenance, and termination, which allow two application processes on different machines to establish, use, and terminate a connection, called a session. This session support, which performs the functions that allow these processes to communicate over the network, performing security, name recognition, logging, and so on. This layer remembers everyone who passes by. After another journey, the data pass through a layer of security and validity, the transport layer. It's now open. This layer kept only 20 minutes. This uh, link will be closed at 5.30 p.m. from Bangladesh time. Please, uh, those are open the link, please reload again or just click again. Data that do not pass will be rejected or destroyed. And because the session layer before remembers the data that gets through, data are retransmitted when there is no connection acknowledgement. This is the safe haven of the data whenever data packets are lost. Down to another layer. Okay, uh, we have saw that the two extra layers are there, presentation and sessions, and all this other layer will process data according to the TCP IP, as the same things are here. They have only two extra layers uh, in OSA model. So I'm going to the questionnaire section that our panel members are already answers your questions. Uh, panel member, uh, if you have any questions, you can write into our chat box. Uh, we'll uh, send back to your answer to you. Uh, thank you. And uh, we already sent you the assessment links. Please fill up the assessments uh, one time. Uh, you, you will get 20 minutes to answer the assessments. Thank you. Thank you, Mahabu. Uh, is, do you have still any question? You can send uh, it to if, the chat box. Uh, you can send it chat box or you can raise your hand. Then we will uh, unmute you and you can ask uh, directly to course instructor. Hello, so uh, Mahabub sir, there is a question for you that is from Kaji Marfa Hawk. Please repeat the uh, data link layer slide. Data link layer slide. I think, uh, dear all participants, you have already got uh, the email for assessment Google form. Uh, you can check and submit the form within 530. And if you have any other question or if you, have any, you can raise the uh, raise your hand or you can send question answer box, then uh, course minister will reply your answer. Okay, Mahabu, you can continue the answer. Okay, sir. In data link layer, uh, it receives data from the network layers and it will add the header and time to the data frame and send it to the physical layer. It's physical layer from the sender end and in receiving end, the data link layer will receive data from uh, receive signals, uh, data from physical layers, and the physical layer packets are 
removes the header and prime timings from the data and the data is sent to the network layer of the receiving end. This is the things. All these things are same, uh, but in uh, uh, data link here, they have an extra things. I think one already raised yeah, his hand. Tariq Talukdar Piyash, Poritosh, according to uh, Talukdar Poritosh, asked us to send the PPT via mail. Uh, okay, so, I think you you can download from our website uh, save.cse.pstore.bd and lecture, uh, from the lecture section. You can uh, download uh, the lecture slide and also the uh, video link. We will upload uh, the today uh, link uh, today uh, slide and video later. But you can download uh, previous lecture uh, from that link. Chimi.g asked us. I was not able to open assessment link, sir. So can we send the link to Chimi.g? Assessment. Uh, Mahabub, sir, there was a, another question from Nafisa. What is the partial installation? Partial installation. I'm not seeing that questions. Previous. <clears throat> Partial yeah. installation, but I think the question was not clear. Uh, yes. That's been uh, partial installation or anything, any topology installation. What does uh, she mean? You can again ask your question. We're not clear about your questions. Nafisa, if you want to ask any question, please raise your hand or put your question on question answer box. Uh, there is a yeah. question from Biplop Kumar Das. Uh, difference between level L2 Swiss and L3 Swiss. Uh, the layer 2 and layer 3 differs mainly in routing functions. Actually, a layer 2 Swiss works in MAC addresses only, and it does not care about IP addresses or any types of higher layers. In layer 3 Swisses or multi layer Swisses, can do all of this job of layer two switches and additional static routing and dynamic routing as well as. Thank you. Then question for Hasnat Ahmed, what is the core router and edge router? Core router are places in the backbone of the network and edge router are placed in the user premises uh, in the ISPs from where the user can take the connections. Question from Anila Azman, uh, Amzad. What is the difference between LAN and WAN network? LAN is actually a small piece of network. When you want to create a network into a, your home or office buildings or into your computer lab uh, with limited number of devices or your printer with your computers, uh, you have uh, three computers or uh, three persons or three employees into your office, but you have only one printer. Then you can uh, connect your printers to your computers via LAN. But when uh, we want to join a large number of uh, LANs or metropolitan area networks uh, to create a larger networks, like as from city to city, from country to country, uh, then we use one connection or wider area network connections.
question form mamubul hasan what is backholing backholing is your alternate link actually question for al muzahid sir is there any difference between wi-fi repeater wi-fi extender wi-fi booster by connection methods or by working principle okay please repeat your answer again a uh, question again from al muzahid uh, his question was, sir, is there any difference between Wi-Fi repeater, Wi-Fi extender, Wi-Fi booster by connection method or by working principle? So already I have given him some answer by retaining. Uh, if you want to uh, say the answer, please go ahead. Okay, you, if you give, uh, okay. Wi-Fi repeater is actually uh, it's uh, repeat the signal or when uh, the signal is damaged by attenuation or foliage loss and other environmental effects, then it will only repair the signal and transmit it uh, with the premises so that the data loss is uh, prevented uh, in communications. Uh, but the Wi-Fi extenders both the Wi-Fi repeaters, uh, uh, Wi-Fi range extenders will uh, increase the ranges. Actually, some uh, devices like as uh, Wi-Fi Wi-Fi routers are uh, suppose it will cover the hundred meters. But when we will install a range extender, uh, it will uh, increase the coverage area uh, to uh, five, uh, hundred meters from hundred meters to five hundred meters, like that. But uh, Wi-Fi booster is actually have both functionalities, uh, as like as it will automatically repeating and uh, range extending. Okay, sir, thank you. And there have also two question uh, that is from Nazmul. What is proxy server? Proxy server is a, okay, just I'm taking some times. Uh, okay, dear all participants, uh, in Mukish for all of you, and also attention, please. Uh, based on lecture one and lecture two, uh, there will be a final uh, assessment on 25 uh, July, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Bangladesh time. And evaluation marks uh, 60 marks, the total marks uh, based. Uh, Assessment 1, 20 marks, assessment 2, 20 marks today, and final assessment uh, 60 marks. So on 25 July, we will send you the Google form. You have to submit the form within 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Bangladesh time. You must submit the final assessment if you want to uh, want to take uh, if you want to get the certificate from us, so you must uh, submit the final evaluation. You must complete the final evaluation and you have to achieve 40 marks. Total, uh, within 100 marks, you have to achieve uh, 40 marks. Then you will get the certificate. certification. Then you need to submit within 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. And the Google form will enable at 5 p.m. and disable uh, within 6 p.m. So you must submit the final assessment on that day. We will email you the Google uh, Google form link before that. Before 5 p.m., we will email email you the link. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, there was a questions. I am trying to answer. Uh, Proxy server is a server application that acts as an intermediary between client requesting a resource and the server providing the resources. Communicating between two computers connected through a third computer acting as a proxy server actually. Thank you. Okay, sir, there is a last question and 
we will not take any other any more question uh, we will go through the uh, question answering session uh, this last question that is uh, said asmal asked firewall are also available in software forms how can you differentiate it from firewall device Firewall, I have two types of firewall actually. One is hardware and another is software made firewall. Uh, but mostly in modern times, software firewall are used. Uh, when uh, it's an application that is used by software defined networks, uh, that uh, information is, when the information is processed, uh, that type of software are installed on your server or on your uh, routers uh, so it will uh, examining the incoming and outgoing traffic data packets uh, to identify the anomalies thank you thank you sir we will not take any more questions so uh, you can go through your assignment please and thank you so much mahabubur rahman sir for uh, answering the questions thank you